Welcome along to Eye on Africa, our daily look across the continent here on France 24. Our main stories. Russia says the Wagner Group's activities in Mali and Central African Republic will continue unaffected despite an aborted mutiny by its leaders at the weekend. The mercenary group has been accused of war crimes and robbing African countries of mineral wealth. Provisional results from Sierra Leone's presidential election show the incumbent Julius Madabio in the lead ahead of his main rival, Samura Kamara. The vote was marred by some reports of violence, with one woman reportedly killed at opposition headquarters. And Kenya's president, William Ruto, signs a contentious spill into law that will raise taxes on a wide range of items, from petrol to housing and basic goods and services. He says it will generate billions of dollars, but critics say it will pile more economic hardship on top of high inflation. Thanks very much for joining us. I'm James Mulholland. First up, the Wagner Masonry Group is to continue operations in Mali and the Central African Republic, despite an aborted mutiny by its leaders at the weekend. The leader, Yevgeny Prigozhin's fate remains unclear for the moment, but Russia's foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, said Wagner's activities in Africa would not be affected. In addition to relations with this private military company, the governments of the Central African Republic and Mali have official contacts with our leadership. At their request, several hundreds of soldiers are working in the Central African Republic as instructors. This work will continue. Wagner has contracts to provide military instructors and security for local leaders in Mali and CAR, but has been accused of war crimes, propping up warlords and robbing the countries of mineral wealth. Earlier, I spoke to Douglas Yates, professor of political science at the American Graduate School here in Paris, and asked him if it would be business as usual now for Wagner in Africa. I personally believe that um, as long as, as Prigozhin is um, at odds with Vladimir Putin, we can't expect Wagner to be receiving $100 million worth of military supplies to be sent to Mali or Central African Republic. So, no, I don't think that it will be business as usual. And it's a good news for democracy activists in both the Central African Republic, in Mali, and in other countries like Burkina Faso, which haven't admitted the presence of Wagner. How keen are Central African Republic and Mali to keep strong relations with Vladimir Putin or, or Prokosian? How much do they, uh, do they actually support Russia? Yeah, so if we look at it, Asima Goita, the, the um, military uh, dictator of the Malian regime, has entirely invested his reputation in uh, Russia. For him, uh, it's desperate. He's kicked out the United Nations mission, as the International Crisis Group pointed out. This is, this is an insult to the international community. As far as Faust and Archon's Twadera, the military dictator of the Central African Republic, is concerned. Um, the troops loyal to Francois Bozizé have been attacking him in his capital city. Neither of these dictators will be able to remain in power and flaunt uh, the, the democratic institutions and, you know, in, in Taudera's point, take a third term without Russian support. And I think Vladimir Putin and the military um, uh, regime in the Soviet Union have other eggs to fry. So the loyalty to Putin will remain um, official policy of Mali and CAR, but the reality is it was Prigozhin on the ground. And without Prigozhin, it's not clear that the incompetent yes-men of Vladimir Putin will be able to successfully do anything in these countries. Political science and Africa expert Douglas Yates speaking to me a little earlier. Next up, provisional results from Sierra Leone's presidential election show the incumbent Julius Madabio in the lead. With 60 per cent of votes counted, the Electoral Commission said Bio had around 56 per cent of ballots. And that's over the 55 per cent threshold required for outright victory after Saturday's first round. His main rival, Samura Kamara, was trailing with 41.5 per cent, but both parties have claimed victory. 
Earlier, I spoke to our regional correspondent, Justice Baidu, who told me what the presidential rivals had said. They both uh, of them, Samuel Kamara and then uh, President Biu, have um, uh, declared themselves as having won this election. This election is being so keenly contested uh, in part because uh, these two uh, frontline candidates were the same people who were in the 2018 election that saw Mr. Biu uh, come out victorious with a very, very slim margin. It is also because uh, the two of them have been very deeply involved in Sierra Leonean politics uh, for over 20 years. Mr. Biu uh, was briefly uh, head of state in the mid-90s during the unstable years of Sierra Leonean politics. Uh, Dr. Kamara, he has been uh, minister of several portfolios uh, in Sierra Leone over the last uh, 20 years, and he's an economist. And with uh, um, the cost of living and the economic situation that is currently happening in Sierra Leone, there were many of his supporters who were hoping that he is going to win this election. Now, with close to 70 percent of the polls uh, counted, it looks like Mr. Biu is on his uh, way to a second term. But, uh, of course, Dr. Kamara and his supporters have disputed the results. Um, a lot of concerns by security analysts go back to the issue of the history of this country. This is a country that came out of a brutal civil war just in 2002, within which uh, it is estimated that over 50,000 people were killed. And many people look back at this and hope that uh, this election goes on smoothly and then a, a winner is declared without any more bloodshed. Already we know that the APC claims one of its members was shot last week uh, and are saying that they are not go they are already disputing the election's result at this moment. Justice Baidu are keeping us up to date there with the elections in Sierra Leone. Well, there were some reports of violence during and after the vote at the weekend. Samura Kamara's opposition APC said one woman was killed on Sunday at party headquarters and several of its officials were beaten or intimidated. Laurent Berstikov has more. The walls of Sierra Leone's APC opposition headquarters riddled with bullets, its floors stained with blood. Hours after the attack, visibly shaken APC members still didn't know what hit them. Just here on a press conference, and then the next thing we knew, we started hearing firing, and uh, our whole office is surrounded by police and army. Pictures posted by Freetown's opposition mayor showed a dozen people lying on the ground to protect themselves from incoming bullets. It was like a horror movie. You know, um, it's, it was like a doomsday, I'll put it, almost like everybody think that would be the end of it. Security forces said Sunday they attempted to disperse a crowd of APC supporters who were falsely claiming their candidate Samura Kamara had won the election. But while they claimed to have only fired tear gas, bullet holes still etched into the APC headquarters seemed to tell another story. Sunday's violence marred an otherwise relatively peaceful election in Sierra Leone, with the head of the Electoral Commission hailing it as one of the calmest in recent history. If not the best, but it's one of the best uh, election day in Sierra Leone over the, for, over the period. Foreign observers also said Saturday's vote unfolded without any major incidents, but the EU mission expressed concerns over a lack of transparency in the ballot counting process. Valid. Next up, Kenya's president, William Ruto, has signed into law a contentious bill that raises taxes on a wide range of items. The legislation includes a doubling of petrol, uh, petrol taxes to 16 per cent, a new housing levy and tax hikes on basic goods and services such as food and mobile money transfers. The government says it will generate more than $2.1 billion. Critics say it will create further economic hardship for citizens on top of Kenya's already high inflation. Bastian Wunui has more from Nairobi. 
The signature of the finance bill into law paves the way for the implementation of new taxes and levies. And I can tell you that it's highly controversial here among the Kenyan population. Uh, Kenya's president, William Ruto, was elected after campaigning for the Oslo nation, for these people who are waking up early, who are working hard and who do not earn much money, and they are going to be affected in their daily life. Among the new laws, uh, the VAT on petrol is going to double, and there will be a new 1.5% tax on every salary is paid in Kenya to finance a new affordable housing uh, program. The opposition, despite the fact that this new law has been signed this Monday morning by the president, is still trying to overturn it. Uh, Bozia County Senator Okia Umtata filed a case uh, challenging this uh, law and uh, he says that certain of his provisions are unconstitutional. According to him, this law threatens socio-economic rights uh, of the people. He says that uh, it reduces workers' purchasing power. And in the meantime, uh, Opposition leader Raila Odinga uh, said that demonstrations against the law will resume on Tuesday. But uh, despite the mobilization of the opposition, uh, these new taxes should be implemented on the 1st of July. Now to Mozambique, which has marked the 48th anniversary of its independence from Portugal. And this year, the 25th of June celebrations coincided with another landmark, with the government concluding a long peace process with former Renamo rebels after decades of fighting. Robin Smith has more from Cape Town. A very special independence anniversary for Mozambique. The country has just wrapped up a disarmament, demobilization and reintegration process that saw more than 5,000 Renamo rebels handing over their weapons to the Mozambican government. We know that there's a long road to reconciliation. And that road is probably more difficult than we imagine. We will need the understanding from everyone. The last Renamo base was closed earlier this month. And last week, Renamo handed over the last weapon to the Mozambican government. Now, messages of congratulations have been pouring in for Mozambique. But Renamo's leader says there is still a long road ahead. Social exclusion, limitation of fundamental freedoms, unequal distribution of wealth, electoral fraud, and hate speech or barbaric killings. All of this explains why peace was so difficult to achieve and why Mozambicans don't trust each other. It is now up to voters to determine the future. They'll head to the polls for municipal elections in October, while general elections will take place next year. And that's it for the moment from us here on the Iron Africa. The international headlines are coming up in just a few minutes. Stay with us. World Views. France 24 brings you all the news from hotspots around the world. And France, the Middle East, the Americas, Africa, in Asia, from Europe to Oceania. Take a daily trip across borders to keep abreast of all the latest international news. Get exclusive updates from our correspondents around the globe. Our daily reports will take you to all four corners of the world. Every day, watch World Views on France 24 and France24.com.